Okay. So, in this introductory real analysis, this course is a basic course in real analysis, which is a backbone of many courses in pure and applied mathematics and statistics. This is very useful course for any branch of science and engineering students. The present course has been designed to introduce the subjects to UG undergraduate as well as for postgraduate students in science and engineering. The course contains a good introduction on each topic and an advanced treatment of the theory at a fairly suitable understandable level to the students at this stage. Now, before starting the lecture, let us see the real number system, how the real number system is developed. In fact, dead kinds and cantors gave a systematic way of its development by using the cuts and the sequences respectively. Now, this we will not discuss the cantor theory and dead kind theory, we will start the real number system, concepts of the sets, continuity, differentiability, Riemann integral and so on. But this is, uh, is also an important uh, topic, dead kinds and Cantor story. So, the interested student may go through the work which is available, these topics are available, any real analysis book for that. Okay. Now, we know the natural number system. So, we assume the students are familiar with the natural number system 1, 2, 3 and so on. When we include 0 in this system, then you get the whole number, then we get the integers, rational number, real number and so on. So, this is these sets are developed slowly as we require the things. Uh, in fact, when we say the set of natural number, it is basically 1, 2, 3 the collection of these numbers 1, 2, 3, 4 and so on. Now, over this set the addition is a binary operation that is if I add any two natural number we always get a natural number, but the subtraction is not binary. It means that if I picked up the two elements of this then and subtract them then it may or may not belongs to n. For example, if I take 4 and 3, then 4 minus 3 is available 1, but 3 minus 4 is not available 1. So, this shows the system n or the class n of natural number is not at all complete still. So, in order to get uh, the uh, subtraction also as a uh, binary operation on this collection, we have to take all these numbers 0 plus minus 1 plus minus 2 plus minus 3 and so on. And this collection we say it is the set of all integers. Uh, there is one more extension of n, when we add 0 in the set of natural number, then this is known as the set of whole numbers. So, this is the set of natural number, this is the set of whole numbers and this is the set of integers. Now, over the integer i, we see plus minus and multiplication are binary operations. However, the division is not binary. That is, if I picked up any two integer and divide, provided the denominator is non-zero, then we get a fractional, not a integer. So, this again shows there is a possibility of further extension of i and that leads to the concept of q, the set of rational point number. So, the set of rational number is of the form p by q, where p and q both are integers. the greatest common divisor of p q is 1 and q is positive. So, this collection gives you the all 
possible number which is of the form p by q integers can also be a part of it when you take q to be 1 set of all integer will come and like this. So, a natural number whole number and integer they are the subset of the set of natural number, but still this set is not complete is not uh, complete because if I look that root 2 then root 2 cannot be expressed in the form of p by q and the reason is very simple suppose it can be expressed in the form of p by q suppose then this implies that p square becomes 2 q square. So, when we divide by 2 it means p must be a something uh, divisible by 2. So, we can write p as a 2 times of m. So, p can be written as 2 times m and once you write 2 times m then we get this 2 4 m square is uh, 2 q square this implies q square is also is 2 m square. So, again there is a factor available in q h 2. It means there is a common factor in p and q. So, it cannot be expressed in the form of p by q where the common divisor is 1 uh, high s, s c f is 1. Okay. Therefore, it is not at all a rational number. So, where we should put? So, such a number which are not rational number and radical science and so on these are called irrational numbers irrational numbers. So, set of irrational number and set of rational number together set of rational number together with the set of irrational number this gives you the set of real numbers. It means our set of real number r contains all the rational points all the rational point and in this set of real number r is closed under addition, subtraction, division and multiplication. Okay. And not only this, this r is an ordered set r dot field r is an ordered field ordered field. It means, we can if we introduce the some partial relation on it or if we picked up any two real number one can always decide or one can always find out whether one is strictly less than other or strictly greater than other or both are equal. So, this so the comp structure is an ordered structure and the field of course, when we discuss uh, you have gone through the real uh, comp algebra part field a uh, vector space together with the addition and multiplication and all other conditions are satisfied then form the field. So, this is a topic which we may re discuss you may go through in the linear algebra part field, but it is an ordered field for you. Now, throughout this uh, lecture we will use three books the books which we will use is the first book is our Walter Rudin. This is a book the principle of principles of mathematical analysis. analysis. This is basically a Tata Megra Hill publication. Second book uh, we will use Sterling K Bulbarian a first course in real analysis. this is an springer fallag book uh, publication and third is m h porter porter and c b modi the same title 
with Springer fella. So we okay. So today we will discuss the few, uh, a basic topology on the set of real numbers. And first we will discuss what is one one correspondent. Then we will go for the countable and uncountable concept of the countable and uncountable sets. The two sets A and B are said to have. one to one are said to be in one to one correspondence in one to one correspondence if there exist if there exist a one one mapping one one mapping from a on to b on to b and then if a and b are finite then we say the cardinality of a and cardinality b is the same if a and b are finite sets then the cardinality then the cardinality or cardinal number of a is the same as the cardinal number of b cardinal number of b but if a is infinite then there is no uh, sense of talking the number of element in the set both so in that case when a is in b are infinite set then instead of saying the cardinality is the same we say they have a one to one correspondence that is a more meaningful than saying the numbers are same okay so this is and the relation which we have if we put the relation suppose a is rated to b a is rated to b if a is a one to one correspondence a is one to one corresponds dense to b then this relation the relation this relation is this relation is obviously is reflexive symmetric and transitive and transitive so it is a reflex it is a equivalence relation so it is an equivalent so it is an equivalence relation so we also say so we can say we can say that a is equivalent to b a is equivalent to b when they have when a is one to one correspondence to b so, so that's the way we define now using the concept of the one to one correspondence we can now define the finite set infinite set countable and uncountable set the definitions is for for any positive integer for any positive integer say positive integer say n let j n represent the sets having the element 1 2 3 say up to n the first n in natural number of positive integers and let j is the set of all positive integers 1 2 3 and so on this is the set of all positive integer positive integers okay then for any set a for any set a for any set a we define we say a is finite a is a finite set a is finite set if a is equivalent to j n for some n for some n uh, obviously once it is equivalent to some n then n is fixed 
So, j n is finite, the number of the terms is n only. So, a will also be finite, 1 to 1 correspondent and the set will be a finite set. Empty set in particular considered to be a finite set. So, in particular empty set phi is considered to be considered to be finite. Then a set B, a set A is said to be infinite if A is not finite. In fact, this definition we can further uh, modify it and we get a better way of defining the infinite set in, uh, in, uh, in the next uh, uh, top uh, next part when we discuss about countability. Okay. So, a is, a is finite means if it is not infinite, uh, a is infinite means if it is not finite and see a is uh, countable if a is equivalent to j that is there is a one to one correspondence between the elements of a and the j all we can define a mapping from set of positive integer to a which is 1 1 then such a uh, set a is said to be a countable set. So, okay. so, this j we have though started from 1 to n 1 to infinity we can also take j from 0 1 to n with starting the point x 0 0 corresponding the point x 0 x 1 corresponding to point x 1 and so on. So, we can also consider the positive or non negative integers uh, positive integers including 0. Okay. D uh, A is uncountable A is said to be uncountable if A is neither neither finite nor countable nor countable and E we say a is at most countable, A is at most countable if A is, is finite or countable. Finite set is also a countable set, but if the set is finite as well as also, uh, and also uh, count uh, means finite that set will uh, be considered countable countable set is self countable. So, we say a is almost countable means either a is finite or may be a countable set that is what countable. The countable set also known as countable sets are also known as, uh, as denumerable set denumerable or n numerable sets all numerable sets okay let's take some examples we are this we say let a be the set of set of all integers A be the set of all integers. Okay. Then, set of all integers. Uh, B uh, claim that this set of integers A is countable. B claim A is countable. Is countable. Uh, it means we are able to define a one to one correspondence between the sets um, uh, of positive integer and the set of the elements A. So, let us define a mapping F from the set of positive integer J to A, A as follows. If I take 
the image of any n under f is say n by 2 if n is even integer even positive integer and otherwise when we say n minus 1 by 2 uh, if n is odd positive integer. So, what we see here is that if we take a which is the set like uh, 0 1 minus 1 2 minus 2 3 minus 3 and so on and j which is the set of positive integer 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 and so on. So, what he says is as soon as n is even it will give n by 2. So, this is related to here okay. then 4 will go to here 6 will go like this and when n is odd when n is odd then you are getting this thing this thing this thing this thing and of course, 1 will go to 0. So, there is a 1 to 1 correspondence between the elements of the set a and set j. So, obviously, this and this mapping is 1 1 mapping 1 1 mapping we can just check it because f is 1 1 means f of x 1 equal to f of x 2 should implies x 1 equal to x 2. So, here if it say n is even then obviously, when you take f n 1 equal to f n 2 obviously, n 1 comes out to n 2 similarly here when n is odd we are getting same. So, obviously, f is 1 1 here. So, that is why this set, set of positive inte of integers is a countable set. One more thing which we can see here is a remark what we have seen is that this a is a set of integer, but j is a set of positive integer j is a proper subset of a. So, but they are having a one to one correspondence. So, what we can say is uh, what we conclude or we observe here is in case of the infinite uh, set we can say a is infinite when a is equivalent to one of its proper subset. In case of infinite set uh, a proper subset may be equivalent to the set itself. So, in case of infinite set <coughs> a proper subset uh, a may be is equivalent to in case of infinite set say a a is equivalent to equivalent to one of its proper subset. And this is also a way to define an infinite set. We say a set is infinite if A is equivalent to one of its proper subset. So, we say and that is that is A is infinite, A is infinite set if uh, infinite set if A is equivalent to equivalent to one of its proper subsets that is what ok. Now, another remark we can put it here eh, that every uh, elements of any countable set can be arranged in the form of the sequence elements of a countable set of a countable set elements of a countable set uh, may be arranged can be arranged arranged in a sequence because basically what we we have a one to one correspondence with this set of positive integer. So, corresponding to 1 we are getting x 1 corresponding to 2 we are getting x 2 corresponding to 3 we are getting. So, this form basically sequence because it is like this 
if a is any set having the elements a here these are the elements for this set a okay then j is what j is 1 2 3 and so on it has a 1 to 1 correspondence so corresponding to 1 you are getting x 1 corresponding to 2 you are getting x 2 corresponding to 3 you are getting x 3 and so on so this has a 1 to 1 correspondence with this is it not like this so we get the 1 to 1 correspondence between the set of net, uh, positive integer and the elements of the set so element of a countable set can be arranged in the form of the sequence so this is also a remark which we can use we will use it now this is a, a interesting result and uh, result says every infinite subset subset of a countable set of a countable set A is countable. Okay. So, proof is let E be an infinite set, let E be a subset of A and E is infinite. is infinite. Now, since A is since A is countable, so we can arrange the element of A in the form of sequence. So, A will have the sequence like x 1, x 2 and so on. All the elements of the set can be arranged in the form of the sequence. Okay. Now, let us construct a sequence. construct a sequence n k of positive integers as follow as follows uh, suppose n 1 be the smallest positive integer be the smallest positive integer such that x and k x and 1 is an element of E means from this n uh, 1 to 3 and so on suppose I am taking the n 1 n 1 is the smallest integer so that the first x and 1 corresponding to this x and 1 is an element. means out of this the first element which you are getting is x and 1 belongs to E then assume that uh, n 1 choose in n 1 n 2 say n k minus 1 where k is 2 3 and 4 so on these are the uh, after choosing in such a way when n 2 is greater than n 1 and such that x n 2 belongs to e and so on let us take n k now be the smallest integer be the smallest integer with the smallest integer uh, such that be the smallest integer such that n k is greater than n k minus 1 and the corresponding term of the sequence x and k belongs to E. Okay. So, now let us introduce the function f from j to E. So, if we take f of n as x of n k, f, f of k, let us take f of k as x of n k where k is 1, 2, 3 and so on. Then what we see here, there is a 1 to 1 correspondence between j and e, because for k is 1, x 1, x n 1 is in e, k is 2, x n 2 is in e, x n k is in e and like this. So, this is a 1 to 1 correspondence 
between between uh, E and J. Hence, E is countable. Hence, E is countable. Okay. So, this shows that every infinite subset of a countable set is countable. Okay. Clear? Is it okay? So, this one. Now, here as we have seen that if A is countable, we can put it in the form of a sequence x 1, x 2, x n all the elements we can arrange in the form of the sequence x 1, x 2, x n. If I generalize it say why because 1 to n is basically set of positive integer. So, instead of this we can take the collection family of the sets also. So, we define like this let a and omega be sets and suppose with each element alpha of a there is associated a subset of omega which is known and suppose for each for each element element alpha belongs to a alpha a there is there is associated a subset e alpha of omega subset say e alpha, subset denoted by e alpha of omega okay then the collection of all these e alpha then this collection e alpha where alpha belongs to a this collection alpha uh, is the collection of the sets is the, is the family of the sets family of sets or subsets of q subsets of omega family of subsets of omega now if we take uh, s as the union of e alpha when alpha belongs to a then this for at least one we use the, then any element belongs to this means it will be in one of the alpha e alpha like this. So, for at least one alpha we use that okay. and in particular in particular when a is an positive integer a is the set of positive integer then s becomes union e m m is 1 to infinity and this we say it is a countable union of e m's like this. So, even similarly for the intersection also we can introduce. So, this uh, will be needed so we can just do. 